Ave Sire Ratio Feet. I worship at your feet. I'll be right here at your feet forevermore. Jesus, I'll be seated at your feet. I worship at your feet. I'll be right here at your feet forever. Hello, welcome to Everything We Do Fun. So um, I just wanted to be at peace with my spirit. I like to talk from the heart. So um, good morning, <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, good night, anywhere you are in the world. So um, today I want to make my opinion known about this um, deregulation. Oh, I'm wearing the papyrus Maxine t-shirt again. Yeah. So uh, about this uh, um, oil price hike. In Nigeria and um, my opinion generally I like to put my opinion out there for things that I feel that concern me and concern other people all of us are going through one or two things but I do not have anything against deregulation as it is if it is done in honesty and sincerity Clearly, when this government, that is, when I say this government, the government of President Muhammad Buhari, when it assumes office, assumes office in um, 2015, I would have wanted to think that they will immediately remove subsidy completely. And I thought they did when the fuel increase, the fuel price was increased. Later on, we discovered that subsidy was still in the budget. I think around 2017 or so, 2017 or so. And then we discovered that the subsidy was still in the budget. And we raised an alarm that why is it that they told us that subsidy was removed, but we see that they are still paying subsidy in the budget. So National Assembly, the press spoke and the National Assembly called for hearing as usual. And it was said that it was partially removed. It was not totally removed. For me, first of all, I want to say that I do not have anything against deregulation. If it is done well, if it is done in a good manner, and if the process is going to continue, it's going to be sustained, and good structures are going to be put in place to ensure that um, the government give oil marketers room for their money. Let me take us back to when we had Good Luck Jonathan and uh, Moro Musayar Adua as our president. They let Moro Musayar Adua as our president. The oil marketers will hold Nigeria hostage. We will wake up one day and we can't find fuel, even though this is where we are sitting on oil. We can't find fuel to fuel our cars. We were buying fuel as high as a thousand naira per liter. You know, there was a lot of uncertainty and what have you not. I could remember very well. You know, some people forget where they are coming from, but I remember. And fuel was sold, I think, as less than uh, 100, 100 naira at then, at that time, you know. Um, and it was it was crazy. It was a hundred dollar nine in Nigeria. It's like then it's like three dollars, but five dollars, but nine is like uh, two dollars. Uh, it's two dollars, you know, like a hundred naira. It was sold at that price, and less than a, a, a two dollars, maybe a dollar, a few cents or so. And we never find fuel. You could look for fuel for three days, sleeping in a filling station, you won't find. The marketers literally held us on hostage. Nigeria was on his stage by the marketers. And I was bleeding. I was really, really angry. When President Buhari, Muhammad Buhari, mm, good luck, wanted to remove the um, fuel subsidy, and I saw people protesting, the whole of Nigeria in Lagos protesting for weeks, I was angry in my spirit. I was like, this money, the federal government keeps paying this money to oil marketers. And they keep diverting this fuel to go and sell to Togo, Ghana, and Cameroon. I schooled in Ghana. I went to school in Ghana. And a liter of fuel in, in Ghana in 2000, let me look at my certificate so that I don't make a mistake. In 2016, 
when I went to school, the fall was close to 200 Naira equivalent. When you change the CDs to Naira, it was almost 200 Naira equivalent. So it was crazy. I just wanted President Gulag to remove it outrightly. But he was a soft man. And that is the more reason why Nigerians didn't like him and voted President Muhammadu Buhari, who they think he is <laughs> more, he's more uh, military in his uh, actions. Good luck took tour all over the country, begging Nigeria that they should allow him to remove subsidy. At the end of the day, they didn't allow it. If I'm going to go over history and the problem of Nigerian fuel deregulation and subsidy and whatever, this video is going to stay longer than 10 minutes. And I don't want to stay here longer than 10 minutes because I don't want you to have to watch only my video for the entire of the day. But you should have other things to do as well, especially now that we have difficulty in the money. So this is my point. My point is that I don't have problem with deregulation or fuel price increase right now as it is in Nigeria. One, because... If government is going to do it the right way. And what is the right way for me? For me, the way I look at it, just like corruption, when people talk about, maybe that will be another different video that I will make. You know, for corruption, for um, for, uh, dereg for deregulation for me, or for a hike as it is right now in Nigeria for me is this. Government should multiply NMPC. NMPC are a uh, filling station, fueling station that the government owns. So the government can go ahead and sell fuel at the price of 160, 61 naira as it is, or 160 naira as it is now, you know, and then sustain it and begin to make the fuel price decrease. And how would they do that? I'm not an economist, but common sense and my business mind tells me that the more we have uh, production, the lesser the price. And you know, the more there is demand, then the, the, the higher the price. So the, the, the thing that the federal government needs to do now that it has deregulated is one, have you totally deregulated? Don't lie to us again. Because if you have done this thing in 2015, we would have recovered. We won't have to add it up with the COVID-19 pandemic. People have been home for four or five months without working. Then all of a sudden, children are resuming to school in September. There's school fees. There's a lot of things. And then fuel, fuel price increase, which automatically makes everything in the market, price every price of everything in the market to jack up immediately because they are going to transport these goods from one place to another, from the farmers into the market to the people that are going to consume them. So automatically everything, the bottle of granite we used to buy 500 naira, now is 700 naira. Automatically everything jacks up. So why do you have to wait up to this time? That's my problem. But it's better later than never. So let's do it right. And the right way is that let NMPC filling stations spring out all over the country, all over, like every street, every road in Nigeria should have three, four, five NMPC, no matter how short they are. And then government should multiply her, 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 her production. Government sells at that 160, fine. And then get a target in mind that in a social period of time, they are going to give the market, those marketers run for their money. If they can't sell fuel in Nigeria anymore, they are used to taking it to Togo, Ghana, and Cameroon. They can still take it there. And Niger, they can still take it there and make a whole lot of money that they want. But in Nigeria, government should make sure that she works towards serving her people at that price. So that we don't begin to see fluctuation of uh, fuel prices. The regulation for me is that you can go to a HMADIS and buy something cheaper. Like, let me take drugs, for instance. But when you go to another store, they sell it higher. HMADIS is making her money. The other people are making their own money. So the oil marketers in Nigeria will still make their money. For people that don't want to go and queue in NMPC filling station to buy at 160, and they have the resources, they can go to those filling station and buy even at 200 naira per liter. So I don't have problem with it, but it should be done well and properly so that in a particular space of time, Nigeria will come out of it. And the oil um, marketers will be given wrong for their money, you know, so that they can, the, the full price will actually, government should work towards crashing the price of the oil for the market, uh, this thing. But I don't want any, uh, I don't want any subsidy. I don't want any subsidy. The money for the subsidy should use. We have bad roads. Let them develop our, develop our roads and give us electricity. Nigeria just needs three basic things to work. We are hardworking people. We need light, good roads, and uh, water. 
That's all. And things will fall in place for Nigerians because we are not lazy. We are not lazy. But you guys keep carrying our money and giving it to the rich one way or the other, whether it's in subsidy or whatever and whatever, and we, we continue to remain where we are. I don't have problem. Let's just suffer it once for all and for all and once and for all and come out of it. That will be my point. But then will the government do it right is another thing. And I pray they do it right. Having said that, this is where I go. I love you all. I will see you again when I see you. Bye-bye.